I'll never forget that eerie camping trip deep in the heart of the dense woods. It was a warm summer evening, and my family and I, a group of adventurous kids, had set up camp in a remote spot miles away from civilization. The fire crackled, casting long, flickering shadows on the trees that surrounded us. Little did we know that the night would unfold into an experience we would never be able to forget. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the forest came alive with strange and unsettling sounds. Twigs snapped, leaves rustled, and an eerie silence hung heavy in the air, broken only by the distant hooting of an owl. It felt like the woods were watching us, and a shiver ran down my spine. We huddled closer to the fire, the flames offering some semblance of comfort against the encroaching darkness. Then, it started. The rustling grew louder, as if something or someone was circling our campsite. We exchanged nervous glances, our flashlights scanning the trees. It's probably just a curious animal, my dad reassured us, but his voice betrayed a hint of unease. But it wasn't just animals that haunted that night. As we searched the perimeter of our camp, we stumbled upon something that sent chills down our spines. There, near the edge of our campfire's glow, lay the lifeless body of an owl. Its eyes stared vacantly into the night sky, and a pool of blood darkened the earth beneath it. The eerie sight of this death in the wilderness made our blood run cold. Its presence in our camp was inexplicable, and we couldn't help but feel a sense of dread. That owl was just the beginning of the unsettling discoveries that night. A strange, overpowering odor filled the air, a mix of damp earth and something unidentifiable. It hung around us like a shroud, suffocating and inescapable. The rustling continued, growing more intense. It felt as though the very forest itself was closing in on us, pressing against the boundaries of our campsite. I could hear my heart pounding in my chest, and my family's faces were pale with fear. We decided to pack up and leave that cursed place, abandoning our camping trip altogether. As we retreated from the woods, the rustling sounds followed us, a sinister presence that seemed reluctant to release us from its grip. It was a night we would never forget, a night when the line between reality and the unknown blurred, and the forest revealed a darkness we could never have imagined. We never returned to that camping spot, and to this day, I can't shake the feeling that we were being watched by something malevolent that night. The memory of that eerie and unsettling camping experience still lingers, a chilling reminder of the mysteries that can hide in the depths of the wilderness. As a young boy growing up in the heart of the countryside, I had always been enamored with the great outdoors. The wide open spaces, the rustling leaves, and the crisp, clean air were my sanctuary. My family shared this love for nature, and we made it a point to embark on camping trips whenever we could. These trips were a source of joy, laughter, and countless memories that would shape my childhood. One particular camping trip, however, would forever stand out in my mind as the most chilling and harrowing experience I've ever had. It was an ordeal that would test the bonds of my family and leave a lasting impact on my psyche, one that I still carry with me to this day. The sun was beginning to set on that fateful day as we arrived at our chosen campsite deep within a secluded forest. The spot was idyllic, surrounded by towering pine trees and overlooking a crystal clear lake. It was the kind of place that seemed straight out of a fairy tale, and my heart swelled with excitement as we set up our campsite. The day was filled with the usual activities, fishing, hiking, and storytelling around the campfire. We roasted marshmallows, sang songs, and reveled in the beauty of the natural world around us. Everything was perfect until the sun dipped below the horizon, casting an eerie darkness over the forest. That's when things began to take a sinister turn. As night fell, an unsettling feeling settled in my stomach. The once familiar sounds of the forest, crickets chirping, owls hooting, and the distant croak of frogs, 
now seemed foreign and unsettling. I tried to shake off the unease, attributing it to my overactive imagination, but it persisted. We huddled together around the campfire, its warm glow offering some comfort in the encroaching darkness. My parents and younger sister were engrossed in conversation, but my attention was fixated on the forest beyond. It was then that I noticed something peculiar, an odd rustling in the bushes just beyond our campsite. I strained my eyes, attempting to pierce the shadows, but it was impossible to discern anything clearly. I dismissed it as a raccoon or perhaps a deer, but my unease grew as the rustling drew closer, and the faintest whisper of voices reached my ears. My heart pounded in my chest as I leaned in closer to listen. The voices were hushed, barely audible, and they seemed to be coming from multiple sources. Panic gripped me as I realized that they were getting closer, and I could make out fragments of their conversation. Keep moving, one voice urged. They won't find us here, another whispered. My blood ran cold. These were not the voices of fellow campers or hikers. They were eerie, disjointed, and sent shivers down my spine. The rustling in the bushes grew louder, more frenzied, and I knew we were no longer alone in the wilderness. I turned to my family, my voice quivering as I tried to convey my growing sense of dread. Do you hear that? I stammered, pointing towards the approaching sounds. My parents exchanged worried glances, their expressions mirroring my fear. My sister clung to my mother's side, her eyes wide with trepidation. Just then, a chilling notification echoed through the silent night, piercing through the tension like a blade. My father's phone had received a message, and as he read it aloud, a wave of horror washed over us. The message was a warning from local authorities, escaped mental patients in the area. Stay indoors and avoid any contact. Lock all doors and windows. My heart sank as the pieces of the puzzle fell into place. The voices, the rustling in the bushes, these were not ordinary campers or hikers. They were the escaped mental patients the authorities were warning us about. Panic took hold as we realized the imminent danger we were in. My father wasted no time. He quickly extinguished the campfire, and we hastily packed our belongings into the car, our hands trembling with fear. The voices drew closer, and in the dim light of the car's interior, I caught a glimpse of shadowy figures emerging from the darkness. My heart raced as I locked eyes with one of them, a wild look in his eyes, disheveled hair, and ragged clothing. Without a second thought, my father revved the engine and sped away from our once idyllic campsite. As we left the forest behind, the voices faded into the distance, but the terror remained etched in our minds. We drove until we reached a nearby town, where we reported the encounter to the local authorities. The revelation of what had transpired that night sent shockwaves through our family. We had narrowly escaped a potentially life-threatening encounter with escaped mental patients in the middle of the wilderness. The very thought of what could have happened sent chills down our spines. In the safety of a small motel room, we huddled together, trying to make sense of the night's events. It was then that my father received another notification, this time from the local news. The authorities had managed to apprehend the escaped patients, but the details of their capture were gruesome. They had been found not far from our campsite, disheveled and disoriented, driven to madness by their time in the unforgiving wilderness. As the days passed, the terror of that night began to fade, but the impact on our family was profound. We returned home with a newfound appreciation for safety and a lingering unease about the darkness that lurked in the wild places we had once loved so dearly. The experience left an indelible mark on me, one that I carry with me to this day. The once soothing sounds of the forest now hold a hint of trepidation, and I find myself casting wary glances into the shadows. The innocent joy of camping with my family has been replaced by a lingering sense of caution and unease. 
I often wonder what might have happened if we hadn't received that timely notification from the authorities, if we had remained oblivious to the approaching danger. The thought sends shivers down my spine, a stark reminder that the wilderness, for all its beauty, can also conceal the unknown and the terrifying. Despite the trauma of that night, I haven't let it extinguish my love for the outdoors entirely. I still find solace in the natural world, albeit with a newfound respect for its unpredictability. I continue to camp and hike, but I do so with a heightened sense of vigilance, always prioritizing safety and awareness. The Night of the Unknown remains a chilling chapter in my life, a reminder of the fragility of our existence and the darkness that can encroach upon even the most serene of settings. It serves as a testament to the resilience of my family, who, in the face of terror, acted swiftly and decisively to protect one another. And so, as I sit by the campfire on a starry night, I am acutely aware of the beauty and the dangers that lie beyond the glow of the flames. The wilderness may hold mysteries and wonders, but it also harbors secrets that are best left undisturbed. The night of the unknown taught me that lesson, and it is one I will carry with me into the wild for the rest of my days. It was a summer vacation, and my best friend, Mark, and I had decided to embark on a camping adventure deep in the heart of a remote forest. Little did we know that this trip would turn into an eerie and unsettling experience that we would never forget. We had been planning this camping trip for weeks, excited to escape the hustle and bustle of city life and immerse ourselves in the tranquility of nature. Our backpacks were packed with supplies, and we set out early one morning, the sun promising us a beautiful day ahead. As we hiked deeper into the forest, the canopy of trees overhead blocked out the sunlight, casting a shadowy, almost eerie atmosphere. But we were fearless, fueled by our sense of adventure. We found a secluded spot near a crystal-clear stream, the perfect place to set up camp. The day passed uneventfully, and we reveled in the beauty of our surroundings. We cooked over an open fire, shared stories, and gazed up at the starry sky as we lay in our sleeping bags. Little did we know that our peaceful night was about to take a chilling turn. Sometime in the middle of the night, I was jolted awake by a sound that sent shivers down my spine. It was a maniacal, echoing laughter that seemed to come from all directions. I nudged Mark, and we both sat up in our sleeping bags, our hearts pounding. The laughter continued, growing closer. We exchanged nervous glances, unsure of what to do. In the dim moonlight, I could see the silhouette of a person approaching our campsite. Fear gripped us as we realized we were not alone in this remote forest. The figure came into view, and it was a man, disheveled and dirty, with wild eyes that seemed to pierce through the darkness. He was stumbling and laughing uncontrollably, his laughter sending chills down our spines. It was a truly unsettling sight. We decided to stay hidden in our tent, whispering to each other about what to do next. We feared for our safety, not knowing if this man posed a threat or if he was just suffering from some sort of mental illness. We didn't want to make any sudden moves that might provoke him. The man circled our campsite for what felt like an eternity, his laughter echoing through the trees. It was a harrowing experience, and we could do nothing but wait for him to leave. Eventually, he staggered away into the darkness, his laughter gradually fading into the distance. As dawn broke, we cautiously emerged from our tent, relieved to find that the man was gone. We quickly packed up our camp and hiked back to civilization, shaken by the bizarre encounter. We later learned from locals that the forest was sometimes frequented by homeless individuals, some of whom struggled with mental health issues. Though our camping trip had turned into an eerie and unsettling experience, it served as a stark reminder that the unknown can be both captivating and perilous. We had ventured into the wilderness seeking adventure, but we had also stumbled upon the hidden dangers that can lurk in even the most tranquil of places. 
From that day on, we approached our outdoor adventures with a newfound sense of caution, always prioritizing safety above all else.